Can you imagine refueling your car when you are driving on the highway? Of course the fuel will spill, and the chances of success are very small. This case fighter jet pilots must try to refuel while on air. This maneuver is known as air-to-air -air refueling, AAR, refueling in flight, or even just tanking. It aims to expand the reach of fighter aircraft, and save valuable air force time by allowing their aircraft to travel great distances without the need to land in places that might not be safe. Recently, Airbus announced that it had completed for the first time, a new breakthrough towards automatic refueling, for more details please see this video to completion. This exercise has a very long history. The first refueling in the air occurred in 1921 between two aircraft. With a 5-gallon fuel canister and at an altitude of about 1,000 feet, a co-pilot walks down the right wing of the airplane in the air, he then climbs to the left wing of another aircraft and finally refuels into his gas tank. Despite the impressive action, it's clearly not very practical to refuel when it airs. So, on June 27, 1923, the U.S. Army Air Service used two Airco DH-4B biplanes to try a less extreme approach. The refueling aircraft released a fueling hose that did the deed. The idea of the hose is still used today. Today it is known as the probe and drogue system, and was originally developed by Sir Alan Cobham in England in 1950. The hose used now has a bowl-shaped basket at the end, and the fighter has a probe, which can be locked. The probe locks into drogue so that fuel can be transferred up to 420 gallons of fuel per minute. With this system, the responsibility lies with the pilots of the aircraft that received fuel, they must work on the aircraft so that the probe enters the drogue. Boeing invented another system, the flying boom, in the 1940s. Instead of a flexible hose, this system uses a telescope too. For example, on the Airbus A330 MRTT, which stands for multi-role tanker transport, this boom, attached to the bottom of the tail, is 38 feet long when pulled and 60 feet when fully extended. The boom has two small wings on it, and this helps the operator control it and place it into the fuel tank, port above the receiver. This method can transfer up to 1,200 gallons of fuel per minute. With this system more workload lies with the boom operator. The first aircraft equipped with a boom was the Boeing B-29 Super Fortress, which was reappointed as the KB-29P. This led to the development of the first production tanker, KC-135. The KC-135 last entered the United States Air Force in 1965 and is still in service today. They will be partly replaced by the Boeing KC-46 Pegasus, unless the program has resolved five Category 1 problems, which means the aircraft cannot perform one or more of its core missions. The latest in the matter, announced by the US Air Force at the end of March, is that the fuel system is leaking. Both KC-46 and MRTT Airbus carry their fuel in several tanks in the cargo and wing space. They can release fuel with a boom, or with hose and drogue. The KC-46 carries a total of 212,000 pounds of fuel and the MRTT holds 250,000 pounds. And they need their own fuel so they cannot dismantle the whole amount. Airbus said that the MRTT which flies for 4 hours at 1,150 miles of takeoff can emit 110,000 pounds of fuel. This means that, theoretically, it can refuel about 15 single-engine aircraft such as the F-16, which holds about 7,000 pounds. When refueling fast jets, both the tanker and receiver will fly between 288 to 345 miles per hour and at an altitude between 20,000 to 30,000 feet. Weather also matters, 
and pilots may choose different heights to avoid turbulence or poor visibility. Refueling is planned several hours before takeoff and the pilot knows where the tanker will air. The meeting time for fighters and tankers was agreed in advance and if there would not be a big problem, they would be done at that time and be placed independently of the exact amount of fuel left in the tank, said Ivan Garcia Ferreros, marketing manager for MRTT Products A330. The meeting place is determined not by flying time or distance but with the minimum fuel referred to as bingo fuel needed to reach the nearest airport. AAR always takes place before it reaches bingo fuel, allowing time to approach tankers and make contact maneuvers. In an emergency, a pilot can request unscheduled refueling. Even though pilots and boom operators undergo rigorous refueling training, it is nevertheless tense. For this reason, both Airbus and Boeing have worked to automate the boom operation. Peter Thomas, senior lecturer in aerospace engineering at the University of Hertfordshire in England, and a specialist on air-to-air -air refueling of unmanned aerial vehicles, says that if you want to automate the system you must outform what a human can do, which is using his eyes to gauge where the boom must go and pair up with the receiver. This is the achievement of Airbus, that earlier this year it succeeded in completing the world's first fully automatic air-to-air -air refueling operation with 120 refueling contacts with fighter jets that did not require any modifications at all to use the system. This technology allows the boom operator to only activate the system and then temporarily monitor the boom control computer maintaining the right angle and distance to fly it into centimeters from the receiver. The telescope boom is then extended to the receiver, the fuel is transferred, then automatically disconnected, and refueling is complete. Numbers showing 43.1. Set uh, 1013 in the back if you want or not, doesn't matter. Happy. to the other side or